What's going on everyone? Screen with me, Astorius here, and today we're going to go over a couple questions I've gotten some DMs about recently, and that is, how do I get my audio to sound the way that I do? How do I get the music to sound the way that I do? And also sound effects and some just general questions when it comes to editing and just sort of my workflow. So let's get nerdy, let's dive in, and yes, I'm recording this on my phone rather than a screen capture because... I want it to feel like we're actually editing together. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Full disclosure, these stories that I have right here have already been edited. They've already been put in a video. This is the three school horror stories video that's on the channel right now. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Say this story was just edited and it's going to be incorporated into a new video. What I do first with the audio is this. I'll go to the Effects tab, and also I'm using Adobe Audition. It's one of the DAWs that I know best. DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation. They come in a ton of different varieties, whether it's Adobe Audition, Pro Tools, Cubase, Audacity, whatever one works best for you. Um, it's going to have the general things that I'm going to show you and you'll be able to do the same things that I'm able to do in those programs. So I'm going to go over to effects, amplitude and compression. I'm going to go down to normalize. I have it set at 100% instead of using any kind of DB. I think 100%, especially for me, my voice and just the microphone that I'm using, that sounds best. So we're going to apply it go back over to effects, compression, and amplitude. Gonna to go to dynamics processing. Um, I do have a custom preset that I already made myself, but it is off of the smooth vocal preset if you are using Adobe Audition. I have it set at this, it's, uh, I wanna say it's right around negative eight, negative nine right here. And what you're looking for, at least when it comes to my voice, but everyone is different, but, um, what I've found sounds nice for a lot of different people is negative 6 dB. When you see the red bars go down to negative 6, that I've found is a good sweet spot when it comes for some dynamic processing. So we're going to go ahead and apply that. From this point, we're going to do a couple different things to our voice to get it to sound the way that it should. Um, we are going to go down to filter and EQ, parametric equalizer. Um, I do have a pre-made Scream With Me Stories preset. Like I said just a moment ago, everyone's voice and everyone sounds a little different. This just so happens to be the curve that works best for me, but um, definitely play around with it a little bit. But in my experience, you're going to get a curve that looks something similar to this. But um, the rule of thumb is just sort of do what sounds best for your voice. Yeah, everyone's voice is a little different this curve just works best for me. So we're going to apply it, then go back to effects, amplitude, and compression, dynamics process one more time. I'm um, going to use the same curve as before with the negative six. We're going to apply it. And the only reason I'm not actually playing the audio is I already did this effects chain on the voice and the narration, so it's going to sound a little different, and it might be a little bit more or less when it comes to the negative six, and I don't want to confuse anybody, so um, this is what it generally looks like after the fact, but since it's already been done, I'm just going to undo all of this so it sounds how it's supposed to. So from this point, um, we are going to go to File, New, Multitrack Session, um, we're going to have it in stereo, 32 bits and 48,000 hertz. We're going to select OK. And this is where we just sort of drag and drop our stories that we're going to use in our narration along with music and also sound effects if you guys are looking to do some sound effects. And what works best for me is I like to start all of my narrations at three seconds. I found that's a good sort of in-between um, sort of my intro and my music, and it gives the listener just a couple extra seconds to just kind of prepare themselves for what they're about to listen to. 
and we are going to go down to the end of this narration. We're going to put this one in right here. And I found in between stories, two to three seconds works best. It's a good sort of palate cleanser between stories. Also, if you have, you know, sponsorships or ads or anything like that, um, I try my best to put stuff right in between stories so it doesn't sound jarring um, when something kind of just comes in halfway through a story. So we're going to go down to the last story right here, put that there. Great. So this is what my general setup looks like when it comes to just sort of importing the stories and having everything sort of lined up when it comes to time. All right. So from here, we're going to add some music and we're going to add some sound effects. I've got my music right here and that's okay. Click all right. And so you can sort of see that the music may potentially peak and we don't want there to be any distortion, whether that's in our voice, um, the space in between this, this green right here, not our voice, but the green above and below, that's our headroom. And we want a good amount of headroom so we don't peak. We don't want any of the voice or the music to distort. So we definitely want some headroom when it comes to the narration and also the music bed itself. And I found what works best for my voice because I like to have it a little elevated from the music. I found that right here it says plus zero. That's zero dBs of volume. I like to bring it down to negative 30 dB. And I also like to put on this filter and EQ setting that we used before for our voice, the parametric equalizer. I do use a vocal enhancer preset. I generally don't use presets just the way that they are. I tend to sort of enhance them to have my voice kind of, you know, stand out a little bit more and create something that's around my voice rather than just use a preset. But in this case, I found that this preset works with my voice very well, so I didn't have to do any additional manipulation when it came to this preset. So that is now in the track, and you can see... So this is about a guy I met in college, let's call him Matt, and I... You can see that it's right under where my voice is, but I found that even with that, sometimes... Despite me begging to be put down... Sometimes it didn't do it right there, but sometimes the music actually still peaks. So I found for my voice specifically, and just sort of the overall tone of my stories, I like to go down to the import and ex... or uh, import or input rather, and output when it comes to the music. I like to put it down to negative 2 dB. And this gives a little bit more headroom and less of a chance for any peaking. So we can listen back and this is what it's gonna sound like. So this is about a guy I met in college, let's call him Matt, and I never wanna see him again. Cool. So I think that sounds pretty good the way that it is. If you, if you end up listening to this on YouTube, you'll notice that I didn't actually use any kind of effects or anything like that, but I do want to give you sort of some information when it comes to adding in some sound effects. So we're going to use this story right here because I know that there is a text tone type of thing that I could have used, but I ended up not doing it on the final version, but... Let's, for argument's sake, say that I ended up doing that. So how I go about adding sound effects to my narrations is this. I figure out where the sound effect is going to be, and let's figure that Minecraft out. Server with the caption saying, transferring here is definitely the move. Cut to a few months later, Peter finds out that I have a boyfriend and directly contacts me for the first time in two years. Cool. So I decided against using a text tone sort of vibration on your cell phone kind of sound effect right here. I just I just decided against it, um, but let's say I ended up using it. So what I do is I'll import the sound effect and I have it right here. And I know that this one is a pretty loud sound effect, as you can hear. Here's, he starts. I'll go down to the volume right here. I'll go down to, let's say, negative 12 dB. And I also like to use 
panning in my narrations to kind of give the narration and the sound effect a bit more depth. So I tend to do the right side. So R30. And you can play around with this as much as you'd like. You can do either right side, left side. I do, however, um, I don't necessarily do 100% panning. I think it sounds a little jarring. So I'll tend to do something around the 30% range. Two years and starts it. And I think that sounds pretty good. Again, you can left 20 years and it'll kind of change it to the left side um, when it comes to different panning, but I'm going to leave it at 30. And this is generally where to look. Um, let's see, we'll add in the music just to get everything the way it needs to look. And that kind of ended out pretty good. So we're going to just do that. Hey man on campus, let's not ever meet. Cool. So this is where the stories are pretty much good to go when it comes to um, just kind of mixing them down for the final version. And how I go about that is I'll go to multi-track, mix session to new file, entire session. And it looks like it's sitting right under 12 dBs, negative 12 dBs. It looks like it's probably closer to 14. And when it comes to voiceover, or any kind of narration when it comes to that or radio broadcast, um, you kind of want it in between negative nine and negative six dB. I choose to have it right around negative like nine, maybe eight, somewhere in that range, I think sounds pretty good. So like we did a little while ago, we're gonna go to effects, amplitude and compression, normalize. We're still gonna do the 100%, we're gonna apply it, and then the same thing as before, dynamic processing. Um, and we want this to be around negative six. So let's see where it's at. So this is about a guy I cool. met in college. Let's call him Matt. And we're going to end up at this. And sometimes you will see stories maybe recorded it at a different volume as a different story. And in that case... Um, at this point, say this third story is a little louder than another one. Say it just looks like that. Um, you know, that definitely will be a little jarring for listeners. So I am just going to do what I did before, but the reverse. I want it all to be the same. So you kind of have to play around with this final volume um, and just sort of have it to where all of them sound like they belong together. And that is generally how I go about editing my audio and just sort of getting my narrations to sound the way that they do, and also how I go about adding sound effects and also the music. Um, there really is no shortcut to a lot of this stuff. I did have a I did have a comment come in about how do I get my workflow faster, and there's really no way to have a faster workflow. Um, it's just something that just comes with doing it for a while and just kind of developing your own personal workflow. I do know a couple different narrators who will record their story, and every time they mess up, they'll stop the recording, and they will continue it again and just re-record over what they did, and that kind of reduces the after-editing process a bit. And that's not something that I do right now, but it is something that I'm looking to start doing in the future. I think that is something that could be a benefit to those who are looking to just reduce their editing time. Um, but from this point, I think the story sounds good. I think all the stories in general sound pretty good. Everything is leveled out. So from this point, save as I will save a WAV file because those give the best sort of depth in all of the audio information where MP3 is still good. It's a smaller file, but... With that being said, since it's smaller, it's missing some information. So I'll always opt to use a WAV file more than an MP3, unless I need it to be uploaded to Anchor FM so it's broadcasted elsewhere like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. In that case, I'll save an MP3 and use it that way. But again, this is sort of just my workflow when it comes to my stories and narrations. And 
Um, make sure to comment below if you have any other audio questions or if there's anything else you would like me to cover in a future video. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Subscribe, like, comment, and find me on Twitter at ScreamWithMeStoriesYT. I upload on Thursdays and Sunday nights at 9 p.m. EST, and have a great day.